Welcome back to Neuron Short number 3 about the bridge identity. In the previous Neuron Short, I explained that the functionality of the neuron processing boards is defined by the software and that these software variants can be divided into different identities, such as bridge, convert, compress and protect. In this 12 minute video, I'm going to focus on the bridge identity, which is designed for bridging SDI to and from IP or for bridging one IP format to another. Remember that you can always reprogram the processing board at a later stage to change the identity of the card. So for instance, when all your SDI devices have been phased out and you don't need all the SDI to IP gateways anymore, you can reprogram the board to be an up-down cross converter in IP or an IP firewall or perhaps a multiviewer, since all neural identities run on the same hardware. On our website, Neuron Bridge is described as high density SDI IP gateways. It can bridge up to 32 1080p SDI feeds or up to 8 times 2160p SDI feeds to and from IP via redundant 100 gig network interfaces. Repacketizing ST2022 to ST2110 streams and vice versa is also possible. Since two of these boards fit in a 1RU neuron frame, the total density of bridge is 64 times 1080p feeds per rack unit. Before zooming in on the processing paths of a neuron bridge, it is important to understand the differences between the ST2022 IP format and the various ST2110 standards. Simply put, in ST2022 all video, audio and auxiliary data is kept together in one IP stream. Think of it as an SDI video stream with embedded audio and auxiliary data in the video blanking all together chopped up into IP packets and streamed over the network. In SC2110, the video, audio and auxiliary data is distributed in separate streams. An SC2110-20 stream, for instance, contains only the video. SC2110-30 streams contain only audio. And SC2110-40 streams contain auxiliary data. If you want to bridge an SDI or SC2022 stream to SC2110 streams, you need audio de-embedders to de-embed the audio and auxiliary data from the video and insert it into separate ST2110-30 and 2110-40 streams, while the video goes into an ST2110-20 stream. So processing paths which are intended to convert SDI to IP, where the IP outputs are configured as ST2110, require de-embedders. Going the other way, so from IP to SDI, you need to be able to receive an ST2110-20 video stream as well as one or multiple ST2110-30 audio and ST2110-40 auxiliary data streams and merge them together into one stream using embedders. So processing paths intended for conversion from IP to SDI require embedders. Zooming in on the processing paths of Bridge, you can see that there are de-embedders and embedders on all video processing paths, each capable of handling 16 channels of audio and one stream of auxiliary data. You can choose any of the 32 paths to be either an SDI to IP path or an IP to SDI path, and you can change it on the fly. So you can go for 16 in and 16 out, or 8 in and 24 out, or 30 in and 2 out, and so on all with the same card, without reprogramming or rebooting. You're free to use any IP standard you like on your outputs, so if you want to convert your SDI input to SC2022, you can simply change the media type of the IP output stream. Besides the de-embedders and embedders, each processing path has individual frame syncs by default. You can optionally add additional video delay of up to 28 frames, UHD remapping to convert 4-wire to single-wire UHD and vice versa, RGB and YCBCR color correctors, and you can add the proxy license to enable downscaled HD copies of the UHD feed for low-res monitoring on a multiviewer. More about this feature later in this video. This is the default device view of the video paths in Cerebrum. Bridge can handle SD, HD, Full HD and UHD signals, but the output format must be the same as the input format, since the bridge cards cannot up-down cross-convert the video format. 
So if the input is 1080p50, make sure to select either Auto or 1080p50 as your output format, otherwise these warning signs will start blinking and your output will be invalid. When you switch a path to UHD mode, you can see four paths merging into one. When using single wire UHD output, you can enable a second HD downscaled proxy output of that UHD feed. This option is typically used for multiviewing to only use a 3G HD input instead of a 12G UHD input. Using the video paths interface, you can freely assign SDI or IP inputs to the various processing paths and assign the process signals to one or multiple SDI or IP outputs. You can select a main and a backup input for each processing path. Whether or not a path will automatically switch over to the backup input when the signal on the main input is lost can be set per video path or for all paths at once. On the IP video streams configuration tab, you can configure your IP input and output streams manually. I say manually because these parameters can also be controlled by IP routing systems using the commonly used NMOS ISO5 protocol. If you want to change the IP address and port of any of these inputs, you can either change them in here or you go to the router panel and change the IP source of that IP destination just like you were used to in the SDI domain. Here you also see the two-legged redundant approach of all the input and output streams. Each output stream consists of two identical feeds which the receiver can subscribe to. Which supports ST2022-7 class A, B, C and D. Meaning that receivers can handle a SKU from 150 microseconds, which is common in internal infrastructures and local area networks, all the way up to 150 milliseconds, which is more common in long haul applications and remote production. I don't want to turn this video into a tutorial too much, so I'm just going to mention that you can easily copy and paste specific output IP settings to input IP streams, you can check which stream is on which SFP interface, and that there are handy tools to automatically fill the settings of all IP streams with just a few clicks. Bridge also features a big audio matrix. It can handle 128 IP audio streams of 16 channels, 16 IP audio streams of 64 channels, and a total of 512 channels coming from and going to the D-embedders and embedders. You can optionally add MADI I.O. for up to 256 channels of MADI audio handling. The audio matrix also features 256 stereo audio delay banks where each bank can have its own delay set in milliseconds. In addition to the audio delay, you can add gain and phase processing. With the audio shuffling license, you can freely shuffle any of the 4352 by 4352 audio channels using the commonly used SWP08 routing protocol. In this interface, you can easily assign any of the input streams to any of the output streams by selecting them and clicking either the Take to Main or Take to Backup buttons. Because all the audio output streams also have the same auto failover switch functionality for each individual audio channel, similar to what we just saw on the video processing paths. You can also use this pin patch interface to shuffle the individual audio channels using the SWP08 protocol. The IP audio stream configuration tab looks similar to the IP video stream configuration tab, but for a lot more streams of course. Here you can configure the IP settings per stream or use the autofill assistant to automatically fill in all the settings for all or some channels in just a few clicks. On the Auxiliary Data tab, you can see where all the Auxiliary Data streams are coming from and where they need to go. The Auxiliary Data IP Stream Configuration tab is again similar to the Video IP Stream tab. 
Next to the video, audio and auxiliary data tabs, there are the default tabs you can find on any neuron card, such as the connections tab, the general settings tab, and the hardware status tab. I won't go into detail of these tabs, since their functionality is quite obvious. If you want to know more details about the bridge card, please go to our website and download the latest data sheet. You can find it under the Neural Identity section of the Neural website. Thanks for watching again. The next Neural Short will be about the Convert cards. See you then.